Hey guys, it's Katie. Welcome back to my channel. I actually already filmed this intro and got started on the video and then my camera battery died and deleted the clip that I was in the middle of filming. So let's try this again. This video is a part two of my video talking about pre-orders and ARC copies of my book. So if you missed that first video, I'll link it down below. Today, I'm just going to be answering all of the questions that you guys sent me in about my book, The Anti-Virginity Pact, which is coming out June 16th of this year. So yeah, I've already had two videos go up about this book, the announcement video, and then talking about pre-orders and how you can get an early copy of the book. So I would encourage you to go watch those two videos before this one. I'll have them linked down below. This video is just for answering all of the questions that we haven't gotten to yet. So I had you guys leave me questions in the comments of those videos, as well as send some in over on Instagram. If you're not already following me on Instagram, Instagram. I'm at Kate's book date. So let's jump straight into the questions. The first one I'm going to answer, I got asked a couple of times, was about the main character's name and how I came up with her name. Why did you call the main character Meredith? Can't help but think of Grey's Anatomy. I do love Grey's Anatomy, but um, she's not named after Meredith from Grey's Anatomy, just FYI. So if you don't know the story behind this book, I actually started writing this book when I was 17 and I came up with the character's names back then. I'm now 23. So it's been about six years. So I'm not entirely sure why I chose Meredith. I know I wanted a name that I could shorten to a nickname. And then I chose her last name because her family is French, which is actually a pretty big part of the book. So I looked for a French last name and then I wanted the names to sound good together. So that was part of it. But just like my process in general for finding names for books is I tend to kind of just scroll through baby name websites or even like census data and like what names were most popular on these years and in these regions and stuff. So I just kind of scroll through lists of names online until I find things that I like. And then I have to compare, do they sound good with all the other characters' names? Are any of them too alike? Like, do they all start with the letter M and they're all the same length and they're all the same number of syllables? Like that can be confusing. So the name Meredith probably came about for a lot of different reasons, but I can't really remember a specific one. I think I just liked the name. Oh, this question's very nice. Where is the best place to order the book in terms of proceeds back to you? So I just talked about this in the previous video, um, where it's available and where you'll be able to pre-order and then where you'll be able to find it once it's out. As far as the best place that you can buy it to support me, don't worry about it, honestly. If we're talking like royalties, it's not that much of a difference from like one place to the other for it to matter. I would rather you just get it where you would prefer to get it. If you really wanna get down to the specifics, I think Amazon or Barnes and Noble would be the best place. But again, like I would much rather you just get a copy in your hands, whichever way is most convenient for you. It's really not that much of a difference. Things that you can do that would be super, super helpful and I would really appreciate that are totally free though. If you read the book and you end up enjoying it, please leave a review on Goodreads, Amazon, if you have a personal blog, anything like that. Word of mouth reviews, spreading the word is like the most helpful thing that you can do for me. So if you like it, tell people about it, talk about it on your social media, recommend it to your friends. That's like the most helpful thing that you can do for me. Or if you're a huge library user like I am, you can request that your library get some copies. Libraries actually get their books from different retailers than like individual consumers like us. My book is available from those retailers so they can get my book really easily. If you request it, they'll be happy to do that. Same with like your local independent bookstores. If you ask that they get some in stock, like that's a great way to support me is to start requesting it so it's in places where people who don't know me can find it. So yeah buy it wherever is most convenient for you, and then talk about it with other people. That would help me a lot. Any nerves about putting your first novel out into the world for everyone to read? <laughs> of course. And I feel like my specific situation has like, I've got nerves in like four different categories because I have nerves just as a writer, like this is my first novel that people will be able to read. And that in and of itself is nerve wracking. But then also I'm a booktuber, so I have an audience and so I feel like I'm a little bit more under a microscope in that regard and I know there's some people who like come onto my videos and dislike them within like 60 seconds every single time so I know there's people out there who just like straight up hate my face so I'm sure there's gonna be people who go out there just to hate read my book so looking forward to that but then also I'm an editor so I can't help but in the back of my mind like what if people don't like your book and then are going to assume that you're like not a good editor and then what if that hurts my business or what if people don't like my book and then no longer trust my opinions on books on my channel. And then of course, because apparently I hate myself, I'm putting out the most controversial thing I've ever written. Like this is not the kind of thing that I typically write. And this is the first one that I'm putting out there is something about religion, which is such like a button topic for some people that I'm sure just the idea of this book is going to piss people off. So yeah, you could say I'm nervous, but obviously not to the extent that I let it get in my way. So it's coming out and it's out of my hands. You know, there's that saying that the book is half the writer and half the reader. It's left my hands and now it's up to the readers to read it and they can make of it whatever they want. They are perfectly entitled to think of it whatever they want. So I'm excited for this release. I'm excited for you guys to read it. 
but I'm just focusing on writing the next book right now. What is the girl on the cover holding? <laughs> it's lipstick. She's writing the title on the mirror with lipstick. How did you come up with the plot idea? Are any characters based on people you know? <laughs> so are characters based on people you know? No. I don't really write like that. I just find that really um, limiting because then when you're writing a book you have this like warring thought process in your mind of how would the character behave in this moment and then you're also like well if it's based off of a person how would the person behave in this moment and also people who think that like their loved ones are gonna write them into books like I'm sorry you're really not that interesting like no one wants to write a book about you that bad I promise so none of the characters are based off of real people but there is a dog in this book her name is Squirt She's a little Maltese dog and if you guys know I have a Malty Poo. His name is Bentley. I got him as like a birthday present when I was 14 so he's my dog. He's the love of my life. Don't let my cats hear that. So Squirt in part is based off of Bentley but I think that's the only like real life connection in the book. That's not to say I don't like pull traits of people that I know that influence my characters. Like one of my characters is really into art and she's a really good artist and I grew up in like a family of artists. My mom's an artist, my brother's an artist. So I think just like traits from my life have kind of bled into some of the characters, but no one is based off of another person. How did you come up with the plot idea? I don't really know. I get this question every time anyone asks about any books that I'm writing and I'm always so fascinated by writers who can tell you exactly where their idea came from because I could never, like I don't know. Especially because the initial idea that I'll get for a book is usually not what the book ends up being about. It's just like a jumping off point and then as I start writing I kind of figure out the real book that I want to write about. So this book started off with two ideas. One, I wanted to explore the relationship between a preacher's daughter who doesn't believe in the religion that she's been raised in and then also a girl who feels behind and feels like she didn't accomplish what she wanted in high school and so now she's made this pact with her best friend and she wants to essentially catch up with her peers in her eyes and lose her virginity before she graduates high school. And putting those two ideas together I thought was really interesting just because of like the whole view of virginity in regards to religion. I thought that would be an interesting dynamic. So it really just started with those two ideas coming together. But the book itself has actually expanded so much further outside of just that. So where the original idea came from I have no idea. I think most writers just get their ideas out of curiosity and like what if questions and things that you're curious about or dynamics and relationships that are, you're interested in and you want to explore. Who designed the book cover? It looks cute. I love my cover designer. Her name is Natasha McKenzie. I'll link her site down below if you happen to be an author or you want to like work with her or whatever. She's designed so many covers that I love. I'll put some of her like portfolio up here besides my cover. Like she's designed so many cool book covers. I love her. Working with her was so much fun and I think she did a great job. I feel like I was probably a hard client because I had a pretty solid idea of what I wanted and so we played around with a couple of different ideas and then we came back to the idea that I wanted. How long have you been working on the project? So yeah, I wrote the rough drafts when I was in high school. I was a senior in high school. I think I wrote it for NaNoWriMo. That was back in 2014, 2015 and I think I wrote the rough draft. I may have like revised it once or twice and then I let it sit and then I went off to college and I didn't touch it. Like I didn't even look at it again until I was a senior in college and then I picked it up again and completely rewrote it. So it's kind of been a disjointed timeline. I probably worked on it for like six months when I was 18 and then I started working on it. It happened in my college vlogs. You guys watched this whole process. You just didn't even know it. I probably started working on it again in like March, maybe February of my senior year. So it's been about a year since I picked it back up that I started working on it again. But if we're talking like from the day I sat down to start writing it to now it's been like six years. What's one thing from the first draft that stayed the same to the final draft? There's quite a few things. I feel like the most important moments in this book. It's crazy. Um, there were some things I had to completely rewrite. Like they were just a mess. There are a couple scenes that are almost identical to the first draft. I'm actually gonna make a video about this to show you the side by side. But um, our opening chapter it wasn't the opening chapter in the rough draft but still that scene I cleaned it up a little bit but that's almost identical and then my favorite chapter in the book which was another question my favorite scene I think it's chapter 15 in the final book I don't know it's changed depending on the draft and this isn't a spoiler because it's in the synopsis it's the scene where the pact gets out that almost hasn't changed at all from the first draft to now aside from like cleaning it up a little bit and I did cut a little bit of it out but that scene is almost identical and it's my favorite scene so I think it makes sense like somehow I got that right on the first try and it's my favorite scene in the book. Any characters you relate to? All of them honestly otherwise I wouldn't be able to write them. If you can't relate to your characters or at least sympathize with them to a degree I don't think you can write them very 
authentically. So there's like little pieces of each character that I relate to. This isn't like autobiographical, like I'm not any of the individual characters, but there's little pieces of each of them that I can relate to. What was the hardest thing about writing this book? I think it was dealing with like sensitive subject matters and wanting to deal with that in the most sensitive way possible. Like I deal with religion in here obviously, I deal with sexual assault, and so these were just issues that I wanted to be really realistic about and really authentic with but I also I didn't want to alienate any readers you know I definitely had to tone down the book with each draft like this book came a little bit from personal experience but not entirely so I actually brought on people who were in a similar situation as this I had some sensitivity readers who helped me with that so the hardest part was I was very anxious about getting that right. Something I can clear up because I did get some questions about this because I've been putting up my writing vlogs for the sequel. Some people have been like, is this like related? And it's not, not even a little bit. The sequel is the sequel to Project Z, which is like a space opera, new adult sci-fi that I'm working on right now. Totally different series, totally different project, totally different genre, like nowhere near related. Oh, something I definitely should talk about is a lot of people were asking about the trigger warnings that I mentioned in that announcement video and were they extreme triggers? Like if I could clarify any of that. So let me hopefully put your minds at rest here. I wanted to share those trigger warnings as a precaution and I realize now that I kind of made it sound worse than it was. I don't think any of the triggers are super extreme and for the most part nothing really happens on the page. Nothing is graphic for sure. Um, especially with regards to animal abuse, people were really concerned about that trigger. That is not like an overall like theme of the book. That's not something that happens over the whole book. It's in one scene, nothing's on the page, nothing's too graphic. Um, all I can say is I am triggered with animal abuse. I cannot handle graphic animal abuse. Like I'm vegan, I'm an animal rights activist. Like you guys know, if you know me, you know that kind of where I'm coming from with that. There were also some people like concerned being like, I wanted to read this book, but I can't support animal abuse. Like you think me of all the people <laughs> supports animal abuse. Um, that just goes against everything I believe in as a human being, which is why it's in this book. The whole purpose was that I wanted to draw attention to issues that I am passionate about, and I am passionate about this. So there's nothing that would have bothered me had it been written by someone else, and I'm really sensitive to that. So does that help? I hope that helps. If you're really concerned about it, feel free to reach out for me and I can tell you which chapter it is so you can prepare for it. But nothing really happens on the page and nothing is super graphic. As for all of the other triggers, the sexual assault one I think probably scared people a little bit. There's not like a rape scene on the page or anything like that. You don't have to worry about that. I don't think any of them are extreme triggers. The only thing that I would say is um, anxiety is a trigger in there. And so the descriptions of her anxiety, if anything, is probably the most graphic one. And then also like the religion aspect I would just say if that's something that you know you're going to be triggered by. Like I was saying, answering a previous question, that was something I tried to be super sensitive with. Nothing is meant to come across as like hating on religion or looking down at people who are religious and I think that's very explicitly stated in the book. This book is not about like hating on religion or anything like that. Also I think probably one of the most common questions was like how is this book getting published? Did you get an agent? Like did you pitch the book? What was the timeline for this? What was the process for this? Are you self-publishing? Are you traditionally publishing? All of that. I think that's probably the most common question, which is totally fair. And I'm thinking about making like a whole video on this in the future because I have so much to say on it and I know people have a lot of questions. And it's something that like I surprised myself by doing this. It was not a decision that I made lately. I talked to a lot of people about this actually. I majored in creative writing in college and so I talked to some of my professors about this. A lot of my professors had connections into publishing. I had done internships before so I knew some people in publishing. I was actually talking with an agent who had read the full manuscript of this book and she and I were talking about this. I was talking with my editor about this. So I was like this close to going the traditional publishing route. That's really what I thought I was going to do. And then like at the last minute was like, wait. And it was a gut feeling and I believe very strongly in my gut feelings because they have never led me astray. And I decided to self-publish this book, which is what I did with my poetry collection, The Sweetest Kind of Poison, back in 2018. The process has been very, very different this time around. But yeah, I decided to start my own publishing company, which is called Ahimsa Press. You'll see that listed as the publisher. And I've decided to start self-publishing my books. And this was something that like, I feel like I wasn't educated enough on this for a while, which is why I never really considered it as a viable option for me. And then the more research I started doing, I started getting so excited about it and really passionate about it. And basically a lot of people ask me like, why did you choose to self-publish? So basically I made a pros and cons list for each one for indie publishing, traditional publishing, pros and cons. And then I made a list of what are my goals with this book, with my career, with my writing, with my life, like what do I want 
to get out of all of this and what's most important to me and what are things that I'm not willing to compromise on and then I compared that list with the pros and cons of each one and the, my list aligned like 99% with indie publishing. And it took me this long to figure it out. Like I'm actually kind of like laughing at myself that it took me this long to figure it out that this would be a good fit for me because I've wanted to start my own business my whole life. And I've been saying that I wanna be an entrepreneur. I wanna start my business, but I didn't know like, I didn't have a business that I wanted to start. I mean, obviously this previous year I started my editing business where I do freelance editing for other authors, but I don't know why it never clicked that I was like, I wanna run my own business, but I don't have a business I wanna run and I wanna write books. like. Why did I never think that I could put those two things together? Because essentially self-publishing, you're running your own publishing business. And so far, so good. <laughs> I'm sure you guys have a lot of questions on this. I got a lot of questions on this and I have a lot that I could say about it, but this has been the best fit for me so far. I'm very, very happy with my decision. So the book is being self-published. I did get like a lot of questions on the logistics of this and I feel like that's a whole separate video. So if that's something you would be interested in seeing, feel free to leave that in a comment down below, both on like why I chose this, but then also like how it works and the steps that you go through. There's a lot of different parts to it. So there's a lot of different things to talk about with that. Oh, this is an interesting question. How was it editing this novel as a beta reader or editor yourself? So that definitely played a part. But then also because I finished the book like five years before I picked it up again and having that much distance from the book. And not only that, I had that much distance and in that amount of time, I had spent four years at college getting a degree in writing. So picking up the book again, like they always tell you to set aside your book after you finish and give yourself some time away from it before you start editing. So you can have like some fresh eyes on it. You're not as close to it. And so having five years of a distance from it, I was so objective. It was like I was reading someone else's book and I was able to like tear it to shreds without mercy. And then also coming from having my writing degree and having all of this experience and workshops and helping other people improve their craft. Like that was a really big focus of my degree was reading a piece of writing and being able to pinpoint exactly where it's not working and why it's not working and how to fix it. And so I remember I had, I was talking about this in one of my college vlogs at the time when I had tried to revise this when I was 18 when I first wrote it. I could tell that there was something not working. There was something that wasn't right, but I couldn't figure out what it was and I couldn't figure out how to fix the book, which is why I set it aside. And then when I went back to it, I read through it once and immediately I knew exactly what was wrong with it, where it was wrong and how to fix it. And that was actually really cool. As a senior about to graduate, I was like, cause you know, I got a creative writing degree, which a lot of people will love to tell you isn't worth the money, it's not worth your time. And that was like the ultimate test to see if I had learned anything in four years. And it was like, night and day of a difference of me being able to dissect my own manuscript and figure out how to edit it. So that was a really, really cool moment of me being like, wow, I went from not having a clue in the world of what to do with this book to I know exactly how to fix this. And then coming off of that, now being an editor, it's different when it's your own book. It's always different. You're always gonna be closer to it than you are with someone else's book. But I feel like I learn something new from every book that I edit or that I beta read in the same way that I learn something from workshopping my peers works in those workshop classes. And it's also just practice. Like I'm constantly reading. I am constantly editing. I'm constantly working those muscles in my brain or whatever. And I feel like I've kind of trained myself to read that way, which is probably why I don't enjoy the books that I read for fun as much a lot of the time. It's because I'm overly critical of the books that I read and I'm looking for problems when I'm reading and I'm looking for things that can be fixed. So I feel like I just read differently than I did before I became an editor. I have more experience of pointing out things that are wrong and I know what to look for now. Hopefully that answered your question. Future writing plans. I am working on the sequel, which is the sequel to Project Z. So that's my new adult space opera sci-fi series, which I'm loving writing right now. I have my second poetry collection. I know a lot of you guys thought that this announcement was about the second poetry collection. It's pretty much done. I'm planning on publishing it later this year in the fall, like winter time. That'll be coming too. Right now we're working on the cover and stuff for that. It's kind of a short collection right now. So I'm thinking about holding off and seeing if I want to add any more to it. And then I wrote a book in November for NaNoWriMo, which is the first book in sort of like a new adult paranormal series. So I would love to keep writing that series. So those are the projects. All very different from this book, obviously. I'm sure this video is super long and no one's here anymore. But let me see if there are any other questions. Someone wants to know, um, since you're writing from an atheist perspective, if you drew from personal experience, like I talked about, I had some sensitivity readers. I talked to people who were in similar situations and in part, I did kind of draw from personal experience. I grew up in a religious family. If anything, my main character 
in that regard is more like my mom. My mom grew up in a super religious family. Her parents are very, very religious. And so then from that, like she raised us religious. Like we went to church every Sunday. I grew up reading the Bible and praying. I used to like compete in my church's dance competitions and stuff. And even to this day, we have to be very conscious of the way that we talk and the way that we behave around my grandparents because they're very like touchy about that kind of stuff. So my whole life I've grown up like surrounded by a lot of religious influence. And as I got older, I did kind of have that moment where I was like, is this what I believe? Or is this what I've been told to believe my whole life? So I went from being very religious when I was younger to realizing that wasn't for me, but not to the degree that Meredith does. But then again, I was not as like oppressed with religion to the degree that Meredith was. Like my dad's not a preacher or anything. So now I would probably consider myself to be like agnostic more so than atheist. I did draw from personal experience a little bit, but it's not the same kind of situation. How many pages is it? Um, it's changed because I've reformatted it a few times. I think it's like 332 now. If you pre-order the ebook, do you still get the pre-order incentives? Yes, every pre-order counts no matter what version. Looking at the pre-order options, they all look like ebooks. Is a physical pre-order available too? Yes, I covered that in the pre-order video. I'll have it linked down below. Will it be available for hardback or paperback? Paperback, yes. Hardcover, no. So just paperback and ebooks. Okay, I think I answered the majority of the questions. If you still have anything that you're wondering about, feel free to leave it in a comment down below and I'll answer some more questions down there. And let me know if you guys would be interested in me making a video about self-publishing versus traditional publishing, my reasoning, the pros and cons, logistically how to do it and stuff. To be clear, I am in no way trying to imply that one way is better than the other. I think that's the whole point was that I had to decide which one was better for me. Anyways, Thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for hanging out. If you're new here and you made it this far in the video, you should just go ahead and subscribe already. All of the pre-order links are down below. You can add the book on Goodreads and follow me on Instagram and Twitter so you don't miss the giveaways happening over there. And I'll see you guys in my next video very, very soon. Bye. So hit me. So hit me. So hit me. First a confession. With you, I feel a connection. With